Anything similar about how they saw problems and how we we saw problems? So I thought before we would ask him how they saw problems, if Allison, which you were the one who volunteered to share what we do to work out problems. So why don't you why don't you see if you can explain to me how we do it? We say, can I speak to you about solve your problem without involving the teacher. Is that right? right yeah. Start with just kids working it out themselves, which I think is a good idea. Absolutely. That sounds like an excellent, excellent idea. Now, what it reminds me of is, is not just how we have to work out differences on the Board of Aldermen, but really what comes to my mind, and it reminds me of something that we did this week, is how countries around the world have got to work out problems. Now, I remember I was here last year, and I remember that, and I met with some of you, I guess some of you, okay, and I saw this beautiful mural that you guys have been working on. Mm -hmm. And I think it showed different peoples around the world and different countries. And just this week, I don't know if you heard about it, we are going to be establishing a sister city program with a city in the Soviet Union. We're in the process of working on that. Who knows what a sister city program is? Yeah, you know what it is? Yes, okay, well tell me. Well, like if, like some kids from Russia come here and some kids from Burlington go there. Right, well we could even do pen pals and write letters. But the point of it, is pretty much what, what you guys have been talking about, is to figure out a way that people can work out differences without banging themselves over the head, or even worse yet, without going to war and dropping nuclear bombs, right? Yeah. Yeah. right. So all of us are trying to figure out, okay, if people speak a different language, or maybe they're a different color, or they have different cultural traditions, or they have different political ideologies, or different religions, does that mean that they have to hate each other? No. no. It doesn't. So what we have to sit down, and I think what you're doing is the same type of thing. People have got to sit down, and once they get to know each other and they talk about their problems, they can work them out. So one of the things that we're trying to do is to see, us, to see if we could develop a sister city program. And someday, it's not going to happen tomorrow, but you know what I would love to see? Someday in the future, I would like to see families, your mothers and dads and yourselves maybe, go to the Soviet Union and learn about that country, and people from there come to here. And maybe have people even live in our community and their kids. Wouldn't it be interesting if we had kids in this class who are from different countries? Would that be interesting? Yeah. Because then you can learn. I mean, you have to read the books to understand what's going on in other countries. But if you actually had kids here who are from Nicaragua or from the Soviet Union, and they could tell you what's going on in their own country, boy, you could learn a whole lot. And then, if kids from Vermont or Burlington were in those countries, they can tell those people what was going on in their hometown or their country. So that's kind of what we're trying to do. Yes? We got two maps that we can 
about the whole world. That's right. Yeah. That's fantastic. And, that's a, and that is an excellent way. You have maps, and you have atlases, and you have all kinds of encyclopedias, and that's an excellent way to learn about the world. But it's also wonderful to go and travel and meet people and have them come here. So someday I hope that you'll be able to travel and see different things and other people will come to see you. Okay? One of the fun things that I have in my office is that every week Every couple of weeks, there's usually somebody from some other country. I think it's a gentleman from Scotland who's going to come in, maybe on Monday. And sometimes we get people from Africa or from Asia or from Latin America come. And it's very interesting f for me. We've had people from China and Japan just to talk about people who come from different countries. Yep. Can you understand the way they talk? No, I can't. So usually, either they will speak English, or there'll be a translator in the room, somebody who can translate what, what they're saying. Like we went to that big school. Yeah. That's right. And I, I was there. Did anyone remember seeing me there that night? And I was very impressed, very impressed by, by what your classroom did. I thought it was just about as nice as, as what anybody did. Okay? And that's, that's all part of the process. That night, there were kids from a, town, a city called Leningrad in the Soviet Union. Who you there? Remember the performance they put on some of you see? They're singing? Uh, maybe even later than you stayed. Okay, well anyhow, I am very glad to see that you work out your differences that way, because that is a very good way to work it out, to try to listen to somebody, to try to understand what's on somebody else's mind. Okay. So Michael, this is a perfect time for you to ask your question. How do you stop the arguments when people um, um, disagree? At the old American. Okay. Uh, well, Peter actually, Peter Lukowski, who is, uh, well, Peter is not, Peter was an alderman, so Peter has a, and so Peter is now doing his student teaching here, so Peter also maybe can help me on this, because he has some experience in this as well. I think what we try to do is sometimes, though, I have to say one thing which is important for you to understand. There is nothing wrong with people disagreeing with each other, okay? People often do and should have different points of view, okay, different positions on issues. And there's nothing wrong with that. Where there is a problem if people are rude to other people or yelling and screaming at other people, that's not good. And you should listen to what the other person has to say, and sometimes you have to try to work out a compromise. So very often in our city, because we have people from, we're very unusual. Burlington is the only city in America that has three political parties. Now, who could tell me the two political parties in America that usually come to your... Okay, yes? So, a um, mayor, the governor, and the president. Well, those, are, those aren't political parties. They're the Democrats and the Republicans, right? Those are two political parties. And in Burlington, we have a third, which is called the Progressive Coalition, which is what Peter and I are, are part of. But, um, what has to happen, if to make things happen, is the three political parties have to talk to each other, and they usually do, and usually work out things, and sometimes the votes may be close, and sometimes they won't be. But basically, you have to sit down and listen to what other people say and, and come up with a common position that everybody can live with. That's what we try to do. In terms of listening to people, Jerry, why don't you ask your question? How do you, when people's talking at, at do they talk at the same time, or do they um, talk one at a time? The meetings of the Board of Aldermen, I am not the chairman of those. Uh, the, the president of the Board of Aldermen is a gentleman named Mr. Reilly, and he conducts the meeting by Robert's Rules of Order. Okay, does anyone know what that is? Uh, now, for example, okay, let's just say we were sitting here trying to conduct the meeting, and we had to take votes on different issues. Now, we know if everybody talked at the same time, we would have a problem, right? Right. So what... You wouldn't be able to hear the person. That's right. And everybody would be mumbling and no one would know what was going on. So what Mr. Reilly does is he writes down names of people as they raise their hand. And there are certain laws and rules that you follow as to voting procedures, uh, who can talk when, who can make resolutions. But they're in a book of rules that we follow and that everybody has to obey. And that's how we conduct the meetings. But you do raise hands. People raise hands, absolutely. Like that. Now, what also happens, let me just explain a little bit. We have, in Burlington, we have 13 
members of the Board of Aldermen. There are two representatives from each of the wards, and Peter used to be one of the representatives from Ward 3, except from Ward 4, which is the largest ward, and they, had, they have three. So altogether, there are 13, and then there's the mayor. Okay, and the mayor has certain responsibilities that the aldermen don't have, and the aldermen have certain responsibilities that the mayor doesn't have. And essentially, we work together. But that, that is how the body works. The city council is 13 members of the board of aldermen and myself. So the next area of questions involves the concerns that we have Good. about the neighborhood and about the world. And what we're going to do is we have certain kids tell you what concerns we have, and then we're going to tell you what we think we can do to solve those problems. Just like I was telling you before, we know that we're just one person, and we're not, we're not even the president, we're not in charge of the whole country, but even if you were, you can't solve all the problems. That's right. That we all need to work together to solve problems. So right, before you go any further, let me say this. I am very happy that you're doing this, and I'll tell you why. Because I happen to believe, I always go out to all the schools during the course of the year. And the reason that I do that is I think that you guys who live in Burlington are citizens of Burlington just as much as your parents are. And you have concerns that concern you, and you know more about than anybody else. For example, who knows more about the playgrounds in the city of Burlington than the kids who use the playgrounds, right? Yeah. And kids know as much what? about the school system as anybody else because you are the kids who go to the school system. And more importantly, decisions that are being made today are going to affect you in years to come. So I am delighted that you have some questions, and I hope that you think about this city as your own city, because you have the right to voice your views and have the city become the kind of city you want it to become. Mm -hmm. We're going to start with probably with one of the biggest problems, if not the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. How can we stop? The war is Mark, I'm very glad you asked that question, because that's maybe the most important question that anybody could ask. That's the best question that anybody could ask. And that's something that probably concerns me more than anything else. Okay? Let me tell you why it concerns me. If you read your history books, what you find is that there have been wars for not only hundreds of years, but thousands of years. Okay? People have gone on, yep. Even when society was very primitive and people used bows and arrows and stones, there were tribes fighting against tribes. And what's happening is that the wars over the years have gotten bigger and bigger. And what else has happened? They've got worse and worse. And why has that been the case? Because now we can make big nuclear Absolutely. bombs. Absolutely. Okay, you got it right. You hit it right on the head. So what happened originally is there were just bows and arrows, and those were bad enough, right? Well, stones, those are bad enough. But what's happened is then you had guns, and then you had tanks, and then you had airplanes with bombs, and you had bigger and bigger bombs, and bigger and bigger planes, and bazookas. And now, is, what's your name, Mark? Adam. Adam, I'm sorry. And as Adam says, now we have nuclear weapons, and we have enough weapons all over the world that if they all went off, probably the entire planet would be destroyed. So the issue of how you stop wars becomes the most important issue because we don't want people to be killed, we don't want the planet to be blown up, and furthermore, you know what we don't want? We don't want to be spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars on okay. weapons right. when children and their parents and the schools and the environment need more help. Okay, in other words, we would rather spend more money on books for this school, right? A lot of things that we could buy at Bond School, correct? Yeah, that's right, a lot of things that we need. We could, buy, we could build, spend money building nicer housing, right? And bigger park system, and making sure that nobody has to sleep out on the street, right? So there's a lot of ways in having health care that is available to everybody that nobody has to pay for, okay? So there's a lot of ways that we could spend our money that make a lot more sense than spending them on weapons and guns and uniforms, right? Right, right. So, one of the things that I work on very hard is to just try to figure out ways that we can stop war. One of the wars that we're trying to stop now is the war in Nicaragua, okay? And we hope by inviting and having a sister city relationship with the Soviet Union that that is a way that we can make sure there's never going to be a war between the United States and the Soviet Union. And if kids from the Soviet Union come here and a sister city program is developed, but your question is an excellent question. 
okay? And the main point, though, that I want to make, and it has to do with the first discussion that we had, is how do people communicate with each other? When you and you have a difference now, what you do is you sit down and you talk about it, right? You don't throw things at each other. That's right, and you don't hit the people. And that's what countries have to do. And that's why, for example, we have an international court of law where, say, the United States and the Soviet Union, Russia, have different points of view. They have to have the opportunity to present their points of view before a judge. Right? Now, that makes a lot more sense. And the judge can say, well, you're right or you're wrong, rather than people going to war and killing each other. So I think that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to figure out a way, maybe through the United Nations, have you studied the United Nations? Uh-uh. Okay, well, I'm sure when you come up, you, you will. The United Nations is in New York, and someday if you guys are ever in New York, you should go to the United Nations, because it's very interesting. What you will see there is people from every country in the world, and they meet every day, and they talk about their problems. Okay, and they, they are trying to make sure that war doesn't take place. But your question is a very good question. There is no issue that's more important. And the main lesson to be learned is you've got to listen to both sides of the story. Okay? Don't always think that our country is right and the other countries are wrong. Any more that they should think that their country is always right and our country is always wrong. Usually it's somewhere in the middle. But mostly you've got to hear both sides of the story and you have to figure out a way to resolve the differences without people killing each other. Okay? But that's an excellent mm-hmm. question. I hope you guys think about that and learn about that. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much what we came up with. You know, looking at the list that we made this morning about wars. Yep. And I never said how we can solve problems. And we talked about how we need to fight that problem. Because one day, you're going to be the ones that are grown up. Right? Mm-hmm. Good. If you think solving problems violently is okay when you're a kid, you may think that when you're an adult. And the other thing, one, one second, let me tell you something else that's important too. Okay, is the reason that you've got to learn to read and write and know what's going on in the world is you can't know how the kids in another country feel unless you know a little bit about their country, right? Right. right. So you have to be, A, you have to be a good reader, B, you have to have books which will tell you what's going on around the rest of the world. And one of the concerns that I have is a lot of people in our country know nothing, know very, very little about what's going on in the rest of the world. For example, have any of you ever been even to Canada? Who's been to Canada? Terrific. Okay. Now, Canada is a whole different country from ours, and and the province on top of us is Quebec. And what language do they speak? Who can tell me? Yeah. They speak French. So we have a whole country 50 or 60 miles away from us, and I think we don't even know as much about that. One of the things I would love to see, by the way, is the Sister City program with, with a school in Quebec, so we can learn something about what's going on to our neighbors right to the north of us. Okay, but that's the main point. Learn what's going on in the rest of the world. Okay. Marcus, you may have sort of answered this question a little bit. Ask your question. See if you, let's see if anybody can figure out what he already said about the solution to this problem. We'll talk How about it a little can bit. we help the poor and homeless? Okay. Now, he talked about that a minute ago. The well, war-related problem. Let's want to see if well, anybody picked up on that. Something that you said. Christy, what is um, you, you said on that um, you help um, you help try um, poor people have might that might not people have the sleeping out on the streets and yeah, but he related it to the whole idea of war. Right? What was the connection to that? He was answering the question about how do we solve the problem of wars, and there was a connection there to that the man made. Uh, what was about poor people? Yeah, but what was the connection between wars and poor people that he was making? Julian? Um, that we're spending so much money on bombs and guns, and and we're not using um the money. We're not using enough of the money to like help the poor people. Mm-hmm. Right, that was the point that I was That's right. Michael. Now let me tell you a story. Right here in this neighborhood, in the old north end of Burlington, we have put in many, many, many hundreds of thousands of dollars to fix up people's homes. Okay? And and this neighborhood is now looking better, I think, than it ever has before. We wish we had even more money to do that. And that money that we have used has come from the federal government. It's called Community Development Block Grants. And one of the reasons that we don't have more of that money is precisely, as this young lady said, what is your name? Julianne. 
as Julianne said, is that so much of the money is going into the war effort and into the military that we don't have enough money to build all the housing that we want to build. And a very serious problem that our community faces is not only with homeless people, but with people who are not living in as nice a housing as they should be living in and are paying much too much money for their housing. So we've got to build inexpensive, affordable housing. It takes a lot of money to do that, and we need help from the federal government. But if they're spending all of their money on wards, we're not going to have that help. Why do people kill and kidnap? I'll tell you why I think. And steal. And steal. Okay. Well, there are a couple of reasons, and I'll tell you what I think. I think what happens is some people, give you an example, okay, maybe we could use this as an example in this classroom. Let's say that there was a kid who, for whatever reason, was really not feeling good about school or the class or the kids in the class, okay? And this kid, instead of sitting in here and participating in the discussion, was sitting out there in the corner or was out in the hallway. He was really angry, okay? And he felt that nobody liked him, that life really wasn't a lot of fun. He didn't sit around discussing things. He didn't have parties. He didn't sing songs, okay? He's sitting out there, and he's angry at his mother and his father, and he's angry at the kids, and he's angry at the teacher. He's angry at everybody. You know how he's going to get even? How does he get even? Well, he's going to come and he's going to take somebody's lunch and he's going to break it because he's really angry at everybody. Or maybe he's going to take a rock and throw it through a window because he doesn't want anybody to have a good time. See, we're having a good time in class and you're having fun, but he's angry. And I think what happens is out in the world, you have a number of people who are just, they don't have people who love them, they don't have people whom they love, they don't enjoy things, and they're angry, and they want to destroy things, and they want to hurt people. And that's what ends up happening. So what they will do is destroy property. Sometimes, also, connected to that, those people are very, very poor. They don't have, haven't had the education and the background to go out and get a job and earn a living. So not being able to get a good job, then they get hooked up on drugs or bad things and they need money. And the only way they know how to get money is to steal the money. So it becomes like a vicious circle. They're on the outside. They're very upset. And then they need money. And they get money illegally. Yes, we don't. That's right. That's right. And that happens. People, when somebody comes into the house and says, steal it, that's right. And then they're going to sell it. Maybe they'll use that money to buy drugs. And the reason that they use drugs is it makes them think that they're happy for a second. They're not really, because they really are uncomfortable in dealing with the world. Yeah. Um, um, there's a commercial about, um, where this guy, um, he puts the egg in the pan and goes, um, if you take drugs, this is what drugs will do to your brain. Mm-hmm. Now, some people don't know that, but that's right. Drugs are a very powerful, depending on the drug, it's very, very powerful, and it affects your brain. And what yeah. some people mistakenly think, while it makes them feel good for a second or two or for a few minutes, it does very serious problems to your whole body. And I hope all of you understand that, right? Yeah. Right, and right. Die. And so, oh, absolutely. A lot of people die who use drugs, and some people use certain types of drugs, which make them addicted. Who knows what that means to be addicted? Who can explain addicted to me? You explain that to me, sweetheart. Um, they, um, they never stop. That's right. That's right. Precisely. What that means is, and it's like alcohol too. Alcohol could become addictive. And some people, have you ever seen some people around here who are drunk? Who can tell me if you've seen people who are drunk? Okay, do you want to tell me more about that, Swinnert? Um, yeah, I saw, um, um, Aunt Lucy, she was drunk, she was drunk, she was drunk, and she was drunk, 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 she was um, if you drink, you get wild up and you fall down the stairs and you can break your leg. That's right. And, and also, when you drink and you put the key in your, in your like, your tires and, and you 
and you're driving and you go to sleep, it can, nobody's driving and you can crash into a house. That's right. Who else wants it? Do you want to tell me something? Um, yeah. Somebody broke into my house and stole my father's um, um, radio. Mm. Okay, yes. <laughs> hurt somebody else because you become a little crazy and you can hurt yourself. Yep. Well, if you get so drunk, you can really get so drunk, you can go um, back to your house and you can kill your own child. That's right. A lot. That's a very good point because a lot of crime and a lot of accidents take place when people are drunk. A lot of accidents, and that's why you've seen the commercials on television about driving when you're drunk. Okay, who hasn't... Po- that's right. But your point is very good, is that sometimes when people are drunk is when they do especially stupid things. Julian, this is your question, right? Your mm-hmm. Okay, Julian, did you want to say some more about that? Um, what do we do to like, stop giving some kind of money to drugs? Well, I think what, first of all, we try to do is to make people aware of how dangerous drugs are and that it and that kids should be should understand that if somebody offers you drugs, that's a very, very bad thing. That you should say no. You should say no to drugs. Right. Say no to drugs because it's only gonna make you sick and hurt yourself. Like Don't on that say commercial. Yes, say no. On that commercial where that one, one at a time. On that commercial where that little raccoon with that hat on says to that little boy, this little boy has a little pin on here that says um yeah. rascal and, and his big brothers are drinking and his big brother's friends are drinking and they said he's going to tell and, and the big brother said um, I want some, want some and he said no uh-huh. but first he said Rascal what do I do yeah. and then Rascal jumped up onto his shoulder and said no. and whispered and I could barely Say hear that. it and he said say no and then um he yeah. said it, want it, want some, and he said, Rascal tells me to say no. no. Okay, okay the, just one know. point that I want to make. Not only should you say no, but to answer the reason that some kids fall for this stuff is they're not doing enough in their own lives that's interesting. Okay, so I think if you're reading and you're playing ball and you're doing all of the things that are exciting and interesting, there's no reason why you're going to want drugs in the first place. Anyone else want to say more on that? Yep. Well, um, if you saw anybody and somebody got some, you know, drunk, you could, um, and they're fighting, you could call, you could go to the somewhere and find someone and tell them to call the cops so you could stop the fight. Yep. Once I did that. Okay. Uh, you know, I'd like, I'd like to answer a couple more questions. Yeah, okay. that's a good I just wanted to make, make, make one point, too, is that, when we talk about murder, rape, and stealing, things that happen to people, people do things to people that aren't okay. This morning you told me that one of the ways that you solve that problem, we can solve that problem is by respecting each other right now. Right? And doing things that are okay. We already have to treat people properly right now. But I think the man made an interesting point. And he said that a lot of people who don't do that are people who are really angry, who aren't enjoying life. And we didn't, I was thinking maybe we can put that on the list feeling good about yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People who feel good and feel happy aren't going to be creating problems for people. And you also made that connection with drugs, that people who don't feel good, those are the people who tend to get into drugs and into drinking. And we had another person, who was the person concerned about um, speeding? Drailing. Drailing. I was. Drailing. Lee, you were going to mention that. And that. You know, I think that people maybe who speed might also sometimes be drunk. And so a lot of these problems are all tied in. But why don't we ask you a question? The question is, how can we stop people from driving fast? Well, what we do is, for a start, we post signs 
all over the road. When you're out on the road, do you ever see signs? Um, yeah, yeah. they say speed um, limit, yeah, that's right. or stop, or... Yeah, that's right. And then we have stop signs. So in the city, it goes without saying that in a city like Burlington or any town, people are, because of signs and because of laws, have to drive slower. And the reason, who can tell me the reason why people drive slower in a city than they do on the interstate, say? Yeah? On the interstate, there's not that many cars, but in my city, there's a lot of cars, and the interstate, you can go kind of fast. That's right. What else? Yep. Yeah. Because, like, if somebody's walking up, and they can't stop, and also, there's, like, there's, like, a bunch of corners, and sometimes they go away. But those are the reasons. Number one, there are people walking across the street. We don't want people driving 60 miles an hour down North Street, right? Break. That's right. They're driving 60 miles an hour and you're walking across the street. They're not going to see you and they're not going to be able to stop on time. And also there's a lot more traffic here and a lot more corners. So I think you understand. So what do we do? Number one, we try to have laws in the city which are sensible in terms of how fast people can drive. And we post those. Number two, we have a lot of stop signs, especially around schools. We want people to drive very, very slowly. Thirdly, we have the police department out there and they will give out tickets. If any of your parents or any adults are driving faster than the speed limit, they will get a ticket. If they get a lot of tickets, eventually they're not going to be able to drive. Yep. Or sometimes when your car's parked in the wrong space, they give you a ticket. That's true. So, Bill, can you ask me a question? I think this, we have a couple of really cool questions. I think Fine, I let's answer. keep it moving. Yep. How do we get money the money to give the money to Okay. Well, okay, that's a good question. <laughs> I won't go through all of the complicated issues having to do with taxation, but this is what I think, okay? Number one, we talked a little bit about military spending, right, Joel? And we said that if we could stop wars and putting all of this money into weapons, we'd have more money to help people out who don't have a lot of money. So that's, that's very important. Yeah. Second concern that I have is that in our country, we don't have a very fair, and I know this is a kind of a hard one, so I'm going to throw it out and you tell me if you can understand this. We don't have a very fair distribution of the wealth that we have. What that means is that some people in this country have tremendous sums of money. They have billions and billions and billions of dollars. Well, even more than that, they have so much money that it would be hard for me to explain to you what a billion dollars is. Well, let me. You know what a billion dollars is? That is a lot of money. Okay. Well, let me give you an idea of what a billion dollars might be. The budget for the state of Vermont itself, it's for all the things that our state does and our 530,000 people utilize, all the all the programs and, and everything else that the state does is only about $400 million. There are many people in this country who own or have wealth, which is more than what we spend per year for the entire state, okay? So that's a concern that I have too, is that some people have so much money they couldn't spend it in a thousand lifetimes, and a lot of people don't have any money at all. So I think that there should be a fairer distribution of that wealth. So those are two concerns that two ways that I think that we can uh, help out for people. Okay? What do you think? Okay. Okay. Shannon. Okay. Okay. Isn't that a tough one? Okay. <laughs> That's a good question, actually, and it's it's more complicated than the initial answer might be. Now, let me explain what is going on. When I was a young man, about 300 years ago, when I was young, you had to be 21 years of age to vote. And that's just the way it was. And then, about 20 years ago or so, the voting age went from 21 down to 18. And the reason that it went down to 18 is that a lot of people were saying, hey, if I'm going to get drafted to go into the army and fight in a war and get killed at 18, surely I should have some say in being able to vote 
as to whether or not there's going to be a wall. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, it didn't make sense. So they dropped the voting age from 21 down to 18. Now, the truth of the matter is there is nothing magical about the age of 18. Now, there's one little thing, actually. But might the voting age in this country sometime, at some point in the future, come, go lower than 18? I think it might. But it's tied into a couple of things. I think the concern is that if kids to vote, you've got to be independent. And sometimes if little kids are dependent upon their parents, can they vote differently than the way their parents might want them to vote? That's probably a concern. But, but, whether you can vote or not, you're citizens. And as citizens, you have the right to express your point of view. For example, if you ever had a concern about the city, you could come before the Board of Aldermen, Board of Aldermen meet on Monday night, and express your concern, and the Board of Aldermen would be delighted to hear your concern. Or the school board, all right? Do you think the food, you, have some of you have hot lunches here? Yeah. Is the food good? Yeah. yeah. Good, well, I'm glad that it's good here. Some schools, that we've heard that it's not good. But if you have concerns, you have a right to express your concerns, okay? And I think in somewhat, yeah, what are we going to say? I've got another question. Okay, fire away. Um, why should grown-ups vote if they don't? Oh boy, that is a good question. Good, good, good. Oh, that's a real concern, and you're talking to Mr. Lukowski probably knows more about that than I do. Because I don't know that there's anybody in the city of Burlington who has registered more people to vote than Mr. Lukowski. Peter, do you want to comment on that question at all? Or? I wish I could answer why they don't vote. I think people vote. Often they don't think of what they have, their opinions is important enough. And a lot of people just don't follow what's going on. They just leave it to somebody else. And that gets us to an issue that's very important. I know that Mr. Lafani wanted to touch upon it. He mentioned that a little while ago. Is that I am the mayor and I have a certain amount of power and responsibility. But the truth is that everybody has got to be involved in the process. And one of the things that I'm very happy of is that in the last few years, a lot more people in, in Burlington vote now than used to vote. But a lot of people still don't vote. And as Peter indicated, it's a problem that we're working on all of the time. And I'll bet you some of your parents don't vote. Do some of your parents not vote? Or do they all vote? Who can tell me if your parents vote? Raise your hand if you remember if your parents vote. Okay, good. That's good. Okay, but not all parents vote. About half of them do. And I think as Peter indicated, sometimes people say, well, what difference does it make? I only have one vote. I can't control anything. And I don't know what's going on. So that's why I want you to know what's going on in the city and in the country. You have to have an opinion. And when you get to be 18 or whatever the voting age may be at that time, you register to vote. It takes you about two minutes. And then you can vote in the local elections, state elections, and federal elections. Okay? Because we, we've got one more question. Okay. And if you have any questions you want to ask us, okay. Has there ever been a um, woman mayor? Not in Burlington. There have been, uh, there have been, and there are women mayors all over the country. There is a woman governor in the state. Who can tell me the name of our governor? Yeah? Um, I think it's. Not, not, not Cunin. That's right, Madeline Cunin. Madeline Cunin. And Governor Cunin is a woman. And there are other, not a whole lot, I think there's one other woman governor. There are the mayor of San Francisco is a woman. And there are many women mayors, but not enough. And one of the very important things, and I hope that all the girls in this class understand, that you, just as much as the boys, have a right to become president. There's not been a woman president, or there was a woman who was giving thought to running for president this time a, a, from Colorado, a woman named Representative Schroeder gave some thought. So I hope that the girls will think that they have the right to be involved in politics quite as much as the boys do. It's beginning to change, but it's not changing fast enough. Other questions? That was a good question. Yes, well, what happens to kids like when they steal something? Um, somebody got, my friend got something stolen, and the kids that did it, they um, went to a police station, and they, the police just called their parents and let them go, and they did it again. That's a difficult problem. 
And the problem is, obviously, that I don't think that the system itself wants to take kids who are 10 years old and put them in jail for the rest of their lives. Because for a lot of reasons. You know why? Because in some ways it will only make the situation worse. Putting a kid in jail will make that kid become what we call more of a hardened criminal. So what you want to try to do is to get to that kid and to explain to that child that stealing other people's property doesn't make a lot of sense. Sometimes, however, young people, very young, are put in not jails, but they're put into special juvenile detention centers. Right. Right. And your point is, I mean, you're right, and some kids do it over and over again, and if they keep doing it and they get older than 16 or older than 18, that's exactly where they're going to end up. They're going to end up in jail. But while they're young, I think what we want to try to do is to change their way of thinking so that they don't uh, get involved in that type of activity. Anything you want to add? Yeah. Sure. How is school going? Good. Well, let me tell you something that I'm very impressed. This is one of my favorite classrooms in the whole city because I think you guys have your act together pretty good. And it seems to me interesting. Now, can you tell me, what are you studying about? What are the subjects that you're studying about that are interesting to you? Okay, Science. you. And leaves. Leaves? Okay, what about, what about leaves? Um, um, I had to study about it. When it comes to the mm. <coughs> Okay, and two I things, two things. Yep, continue. And I put pieces of tape on it so I will remember. Okay, one thing that I want to tell you, okay, which is very important, is that you would be amazed how everything is related to everything else. Don't think that science is science, and reading is reading, and writing is writing, and poetry is poetry. They're all related, okay? For example, you can't know very much about what's going on in the world if you don't have some understanding of science, okay? Because science is changing the world. You know those people who invented computers? Do we have computers in the school? Yes. Yeah. Okay, right behind us. Okay, well, there's a computer revolution, and that revolution is going to continue, okay? So you have to understand a little bit about science, okay? And you will find out that everything is related to everything else. Okay, what else are you studying about that interests you? Yep. Fruit, me and Ryan are studying about fruits and seeds. We're studying about um, the outside, if there's skin, there's a soft sort of skin that you can peel off, and there's a hard that you can't get open. Okay, well, let me mention something that might be of interest to you in the springtime. Um, well, Mr. Sclafani, I, I, you may know that we do, we have community gardens out in the Interville, mm -hmm. where people do some planting. I, I don't know, I really don't know if it's possible for the classmates to get a little fun. That might be of interest mm -hmm. to see, to do some actual planting and see the fruits and vegetables uh, grow up. That's something that might be interesting to kids? Yeah. If you would like that, actually grow your own garden. We do that. And also, in terms of leaves, you remind me of something. We're doing a recycling program with leaves that, that's interesting. Okay, what else do you know? Yep? Um, well, well, I think change. Change, good. Boy, that is terrific. You know why that's terrific? Huh. Because change is what is life is all about. We're all changing. You realize that we've all... We get older yeah. every day. Every minute. Every since we... Since... Every second, too. Every now oh, my God. Since <laughs> we've been talking, we aged about 30 or 40 minutes already. Okay, and that's important to understand. Every day. Older every day. Every day. That's right. We're 30 Four minutes older. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now we're another 10 seconds older than that. The point is, the point is that some people have an outlook on life. The things never change. But in truth, things change all the time. Our minds change. Our bodies change. The world changes. Our city changes. And that's natural. And I still don't believe it. You still don't believe it. Okay. Well, it's true. You don't believe it changed? You don't believe you're 30 minutes older? His hair is gray, isn't it? It's yeah. amazing. You started off 
Your hair was black and now it's gray. It must be. You're aging rapidly. Mine is aging rapidly, so rapidly you can turn into Did any of you ever see a Star Trek program? Yeah. 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 Where that aging process becomes yeah, speeded up? Yeah, What's the song that we have? That Started up. Turn, 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 there it is. This is it. Okay. okay hey, well, let's sing this song. This is, I'm excited about this song. One of my favorite songs. Okay. Uh, no, that's a different song. Yeah. I've never seen. I have to tell you, kids, this is the first time in my life I've ever seen hangers being used <laughs> to hang up songs. But that is a great idea. It's a wonderful idea. Okay. You know, you know, you know Mayor Sanders. Yep. Speaking about hangers, but you also had a question that we didn't, didn't include. It was an interesting question about what do mayors wear? And somebody, somebody thought that wasn't a very intelligent question. I told him how that was a real, when you first became a mayor, how that was a real issue. Well, I know. You know, one of the things I have to say, a personal note, always, that always Hang amazes me. me. How, how old are you kids? I'm eight. I'm the oldest. I'm the oldest. Okay. And I think probably, probably the oldest. probably I am the only mayor of Burlington you've ever known or can remember, right? Right. When everyone says mayor, you say, well, Mayor Sanders or Bernie. And probably you always think that all mayors always look like me, right? No. 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 That's what Peter looks. Peter and I come from the same background. We dress alike. But, you guys both but most, most mayors actually wear suits and ties most of the time. I do on occasion. Sometimes people get a little bit angry with me. They think I should always wear a tie, but I, I don't. But I wanted to tell you, mayors usually dress mostly like other business people dress. I don't. I don't know what they're wearing. I'm excited about the fact that we're going to sing this song. Okay, now uh, here's the microphone. Well, I think if you sing, it'll carry fine. <laughs>
City Hall. I know where City Hall is. Maybe we could find your birth certificates, which are probably in the city clerk's office. Okay. I'm the only one. Until you can definitely find out when you were born. Yeah. 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 I know. I know when I was born. Okay. And I found out when he was born. Okay. So I'm hoping to see you in City Hall. Okay. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye.